Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 39 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. In part 38, I had started talking about the qualitative analysis of organic compounds. And I told you, when you have to identify an organic compound, the first step is to find out the elements in it. So this I did in part 38, so I would encourage you to watch part 38 and then come to this video because this is a continuation of that. So I told you that the first step is to find out the presence of carbon and hydrogen so that you know that the compound is a hydrocarbon. After finding out the presence of carbon and hydrogen for which we carried out a test, we now uh, prepare a sodium extract because we want to identify the presence of other elements. When we prepare a sodium extract, which is also known as the Lessens extract, we convert the covalent compound into its ionic form. And when these elements, that is nitrogen, sulfur and halogen are present, you get these in the ionic form of the sodium or sodium salts of these elements. And since they are in the ionic form, the tests that you get are faster and they are, they are clearer. So in the next step, we prepared the Lysenz extract. I would again encourage you to watch part 38 where I taught you how to prepare the Lysenz extract. So now you have got the Lysenz extract. The next step is to identify the presence of nitrogen, sulfur and halogens with the help of the Lysenz extract. In this video, I'm only going to be talking about the presence, the testing, the presence of nitrogen and sulfur, and then the testing the presence of halogens with the help of Lysenz extract, and uh, the presence of phosphorus separately would be done in the next video. So let us come straight to testing nitrogen or testing the presence of nitrogen with the help of Lysenz extract. You know, when you prepared the Lysenz extract, the sodium it fused with the compound and if nitrogen was present in the compound, it results in the formation of the cyanide of that compound. Why cyanide? Because a hydrocarbon contains carbon and it contains nitrogen. So when sodium combines with the nitrogen, it results in the formation of a cyanide. So the negative ion in these compounds is a cyanide. So if you can test the presence of the, the cyanide ion, you know nitrogen would be present in the compound. So how do we do it? the test for nitrogen. We take the sodium extract and we do it in two steps. What do we do? We first take the sodium extract in a test tube and then we add iron sulfate. Ferrous sulfate is added to it. And once ferrous sulfate is added, the test doesn't end here. In the next step, we heat it up with concentrated sulfuric acid. And when we heat it up with concentrated sulfuric acid, a Prussian blue color appears. And the presence, the formation of the Prussian blue color shows us the presence of nitrogen. So what actually happens when we heat it with uh, ferrous sulfate and concentrated sulfuric acid? Let us see. So in the first step, we added the sodium, uh, sorry, the ferrous sulfate to the sodium extract, that is iron 2 sulfate. So in the first step, you had the sodium cyanide. It combined with the ferrous sulfate and resulted in the formation of sodium hexacyanoferrate 2. Sodium hexacyanoferrate 2. Why do we write the 2? Because here the charge on iron is plus 2. It is a ferrous ion. Right? Once the compound sodium hexacyanoferrate 2 is formed, then in the next step, what do we do? We add concentrated H2SO4. As you see here in this reaction, the cyanide ion from the salt, that is from the sodium extract, it combines with the ferrous ions of the ferrous sulfate and results in the formation of this hexacyanoferrate ion. And the formula of sodium hexacyanoferrate 2 would be Na4FeCn6 for negative. Right? Why is the formula this? Why is it hexacyan? Why? How do we know it? the charge on iron is plus 2? The charge on cyanide ion is minus 1. And the charge on sodium is plus 1. Right? So there are 6 cyanide ions, which means there are 6 negative charges. And 4 sodiums have got 4 positive charges. So if this overall ion has a 4 negative charge, it means out of 6 negative charges, Two negative charges have been neutralized by iron. 
Therefore, the charge on iron in this compound, that is sodium hexacyanoferrate, the charge on iron is plus 2. And that's why we write the 2 here. Only to specify. Why? To specify because it's really important in the next step when you add concentrated H2SO4, some of the ferrous ions are going to get converted, are going to get oxidized to ferric ions. So what happens? On heating, this sodium hexacyanoferrate and this hexacyanoferrate ion, when it combines with the uh, with the water H2SO4, some of the ferrous gets converted into Fe3 positive. So now instead of the sodium salt, you get a salt with the ferric ions, the ferric ions and the ferrous ions. The the Hexacyanoferrate ion remains as such, but it forms a salt with the ferric ions instead. So what you, the compound that you get after adding concentrated sulfuric acid is iron 3 hexacyanoferrate 2. The hexacyanoferrate 2 remains and instead of sodium, the Fe3 positive ions or the ferric ions become the cation in this complex salt. So, in the first step, you got the uh, hexacyanoferrate ion, then the three, three hexacyanoferrate ions combined with four Fe3 positive ions which were formed as a result of addition of concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, these ferric ions will combine with the, uh, the anion, the cation will combine with the anion and in the proper ratio, it will result in the formation of feriferrocyanide, which is a common name, which is actually iron 3, which is a cation and hexacyanoferrate 2 is the anion and what how does this um, uh, how is this formula formed we know that FeCN6 whole thrice has a charge of has a charge oh, sorry uh, FeCN6 has a charge of 4 negative and Fe ferric ion in ferric ion the charge on the ferric ion is plus 3 so you have if you have this 3 here it means there are 12 negative charges why because one ion had a charge of 4 negative. So if there are 3, the charge is 12 negative. And in order to balance this, how many ferric ions would you need? One ferric ion has a charge of 3 positive. So you need 3 into 4, 4 ferric ions to make it 12 positive charges. Therefore, Fe4 into, or, or rather, Fe4 is the cation and Fe, Cn6 and whole thrice that is the hexacyanoferrate ion would be thrice and that is how you would get this compound which is periferocyanide or iron 3 hexacyanoferrate which is Prussian blue in color and since the XH2O shows you that it's the hydrated version of the compound. So the appearance of Prussian blue color proves the presence of um, the presence of nitrogen in this compound. So let us come to the next element. How do we test the presence of sulfur? Let us say we carried out this reaction, nothing happened. So now which shows that nitrogen is not present in our compound. So we go to the next step, we take some more sodium extract and now we carry out the test for sulfur. There are two tests given for sulfur. In the first test what we do, the sodium fusion extract is acidified with acetic acid and lead acetate. It is acidified, <coughs> the reaction takes place in an acidic medium and we, the actual reaction is between lead acetate and the sulfide ion if it is present in the compound. And you know, uh, when we prepare the sodium fusion extract, if sulfur is present, the sulfide, sodium sulfide will be formed. So it is this sulfide ion which combines with the lead from lead acetate and results in the formation of lead sulfide. Lead sulfide is a black precipitate. It is a black compound that does not dissolve in water. Therefore, when you, uh, when you see the formation of lead sulfide, you will get a black precipitate and the appearance of that black powdery substance, which is not actually dissolved and is kind of settling down in the bottom, is, will prove the presence of sulfur. Another test for sulfur can also be done. On treating the sodium extract with sodium nitroprusside, the appearance of violet color indicates sulfur. Now, this is sodium nitroprusside, right? When it combines with the sulfide, that is the sodium sulfide, it results in the 
it results in the formation of the sulfur it, it forms a thio compound the sulfur also goes and attaches itself in the anion and changes the formula of the anion to four negative you, you know how this happens this is the charge on this anion is two negative but we know the charge on sulfur is two negative so there were two negative charges already and the sulfide ion also went and joined the negative ion resulting in this violet anion which now has a charge of four negative and this anion is um, i mean this compound that is formed uh, the anion the presence of this anion gives a violet color to the solution and the appearance of violet color would again prove the presence of sulfur so what did we do by these reactions we could find using the lessens extract we could tell whether nitrogen is present or whether sulfur is present in the compound sometimes what happens you may have a compound which may have multiple functional groups maybe and maybe it has both nitrogen and sulfur in it if the compound has both nitrogen and sulfur so if both nitrogen and sulfur are present then the instead of sodium cyanide sodium thiocyanide will be formed that is you get NaCN if nitrogen is present you get NaCN but if sulfur is also present then you will get NaSCN sodium thiocyanide now you will have to test for the presence of sodium thio the thiocyanide ion is different from just uh, just cyanide or just a sulfide ion so what would you the sodium thiocyanide ion will be formed now if you carry out this reaction with sodium that is ferrous sulfate and then uh, acidifying it with uh, concentrated h2so4 you get a prussian blue color due to the presence of due to the formation of ferrocyanide compound that does not happen if it is a thiocyanate ion instead of a cyanide ion and since it is a thiocyanate ion when you carry out the same test instead of getting prussian blue color the color that would appear would be blood red so instead of blue, if you're getting red, it shows the presence of both nitrogen and sulfur, right? So if thiocyanate is present, then for the same test, when you add ferric ions, when you add, when it's converted to ferrous ions, nothing happens. But when, when you make it react with concentrated H2SO4 and some of the ferrous ions get converted into ferric ions, that is when the ferric ion will react with the thiocyanate ion resulting in the formation of Ferrous, uh, ferric thiocyanate ion which would be blood red in color now let us say we do not want a thiocyanate to be formed or sometimes you know we used excess of sodium the sodium extract when it is prepared with excess of sodium you do not get the thiocyanate ion at all you would rather get the, the thiocyanate ion automatically will decompose in the presence of so much of sodium into sulfide and cyanide. And once sulfide and cyanide are formed, then you will get the proper Prussian blue color for nitrogen. And you will get either a black of lead sulfide or a violet of this uh, with sodium nitroproside. So if you, if sodium, when you're preparing the sodium extract, if you use excess sodium, then the thiocyanate will not be formed. You will get the sulfide and the cyanide and both of them would give their individual uh, reactions. So we'll say if sodium extract is prepared with excess of sodium, the, th the thiocyanate decomposes into sulfide and cyanide, giving their usual tests. And honestly, this is wrong. S should be two negative and Cn should be one negative sulfide and cyanide to give their usual tests and th sodium thiocyanate if you use it um, uh, heat it with excess of sodium it result in the formation of th sodium cyanide and sodium sulfide and they would give their usual tests so this was uh, how to identify or in the presence of sul uh, so uh, nitrogen and sulfur using lessens extract so with this, I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.